Hello, my name is Marcus from Gigahertz Solutions. I will briefly explain the operation of your ME3840B. After receiving the order, additionally to your measuring device you will find a calibration certificate, a grounding cable, a handy card with the actual building biological values and the instructions in your packaging. On the front of the device you see the display and on top of it the frequency selection switch of the internal filter. On the right is the power switch, as well as the signal selection switch and the input for connecting the grounding cable. Otherwise, there are no other switching or connection options on the device. On the back you can see the internal serial numbers of the device and the internal filter and below is the battery box with the already installed 9 volt block. All right, now let's get to how to actually use the meter. To measure, you just have to push the switch upwards. The device is now active and is already in progress with the measurement. If you push this switch all the way up, additionally, you will hear a field strength proportional audio signal similar to that of a Geiger counter. That means high field strength, high signal input, fast sound and low field strength, little signal input, slow sound. The signal range that was chosen, in this case it stands on E, is symbolized here below in the display by the line at the appropriate place. E stands for electrical field and is measured by the unit of volt per meter. If you push the switch down, you can change your measurement to a different signal range, to M, standing for magnetic field with the unit nano tesla. The device measures both electrically and magnetically one-dimensional along an axis. The sensor is located here at the top and measures straight ahead, right into the direction the measuring device is pointing to. In order to assess the overall situation, all three axes must be measured. This means you have to remember the measurement value in this position. We can turn the device and then also mark the measurement value here. Now turn the measuring device upright and also note the measuring value here. All three values are quartered, added to each other, and then the square root is taken. The result is then showing the three-dimensional radiation load, which is affecting you at this very spot. This is working for both magnetic as well as electrical signals. To measure the magnetic field, it is sufficient to grip the measuring device here at the bottom and walk through the room. In the case of the electrical field, there are two ways to measure. Now for the potential free measurement, I place the meter down and walk away far enough to not longer influence the electrical field myself. Or I use a fixture. The second option is a potentially bound measurement. For this, you can plug the grounding cable right here into the socket. Via the crocodile clamp, connect the measuring device to a grounded point, for example, the protective contact of your plugs in the wall. This type of measurement is perfect for looking for sources of electrosmog. With the connected grounding cable, you can grip your device here and hold it in your hand while you can walk the room freely. Everything that is above here is being measured. When I approach the source, I have a higher deflection on the display and also louder and faster audio signal. If I go away from the source or walk into another direction entirely, the signal turns weaker. Via the built-in frequency filter, I can now differentiate which area I measure. If the switch is positioned on the top position, regardless if you measure electrical or magnetical fields, you get 5 Hz to 100 kHz in the full range of the measuring device. But I can also go down a switching position and therefore only have the measurement result on the display that I get in the 16 Hz range, for example from railway current. If I don't want to see the railway current, I switch down to the next position and thus can take measurements from 50 to 100 kilohertz. The very low position is for dirty power from 2 kilohertz upwards to 100 kilohertz. Signals from any other frequency range are being cut off and do not influence the measurement value on the display. I hope this video has helped you to measure safely and correctly with AME3840B in the future.